Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here, uh, walking through the spirit of peace. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. And I, I said this in our last videos of being able to say that they kind of work off each other. Love being uh, the most sincere, the most, uh, when there's faith, open love, the greatest of these is love. Let me show you the most excellent way. Love your neighbor. Um, all these uh, realities of love being first, because then it flows from that love. We can have joy in our lives because the spirit of uh, love gives us joy uh, in our gifts and talents, and frankly, joy because of not in our circumstances, but because we have Jesus. And then we, we've settled upon it. When you have joy in Jesus um, and serving others and being able to see yourself as a child of God, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's from Philippians, but we're in Second Thessalonians today because it speaks about this peace of the Lord. Second Thessalonians, right before First Timothy, it's right after First Thessalonians, it's kind of tucked in there, a uh, little three chapters. Uh, but a second letter to the Thessalonians that Paul writes uh, to the church to be able to just expound upon, uh, frankly, who they are, uh, the identity that they have, uh, the great grace and love of God. Um, but also, hey, a little bit of instructions for the church. Um, in Second Thessalonians chapter 3, as you open up to that, there's a request for prayer, but there, right at the end of it, there's an, a warning. He wants to, Paul wants to warn against idleness, uh, that, that people are just going about their, their days just being busybodies. Uh, and he's talking about the idleness of faith, um, that they should also work for their bread. They should work for their keep. It's good to put your hands to work and, and being able to not just sit on the sideline, but rather get involved in your community, get involved for the provision of your family or for yourself, uh, and don't just do it to be busybody, but rather there's a peace to be able to bring about in your vocation. Now, I'm sitting in one of the most peaceful places that I always find, um, and that is driving. A little bit of history for me is um, I had to drive quite a bit being raised in Nebraska. We lived in a really small community. Um, and when I, when I went to high school, my junior and senior year, uh, I actually went to a Lutheran high school uh, that was 35 miles away. And so each morning I'd get up and, and being able to uh, have some time, have some breakfast, uh, and then being able to get out onto the road. Now it's 35 miles away, it took me 35 minutes. Um, <laughs> because in Nebraska, it was just highway. And it was such a peace-filled morning for me because you could just roll through the countryside on this highway, setting the cruise and being able just to go with it. Um, and I had to make up games along the way to be able to kind of uh, entertain myself on my way. Uh, but uh, it was such a peace-filled way. When I went 35 miles there, then I'd go to school, then I'd have like football or basketball practice afterwards, and then I would have a, a, a ride back. And that gave me a time to just digress the day, just to soak in, hey, how was that day? What had happened in practice? Uh, what could I do better? Uh, how could I actually speak to God? Uh, how could I just be silent a lot of times? I didn't have the stereo on. It just was a peaceful time to just drive and just go forward. That's kind of stayed with me throughout my life because there are so many times that I get into this space, get into this drive, and I'm not driving right now, so don't uh, be alarmed. Uh, but I love to be able to go down to like A1A early in the morning and just set cruise, you know, on uh, you know 30 miles an hour or 35 miles an hour, and, and just go and just look around and being able to say, oh yeah, I can see that maybe the ocean's there, the moonlight's coming off the ocean, uh, just to be a part of God's creation. But just to drive and, and take in the scenery, but also just to kind of have that connection of silence, um, silence and being able to uh, go ahead. What a piece that is. And I know that's a piece that um, comes through uh, kind of routine or kind of uh, in, in a way that was ministering to me before. And that's not necessarily what we're talking about. A piece is rest. Um, but Paul comes into here and he's saying, hey, um, don't just go about life trying to piece things together and trying to just work the day and get through the day. Rather, go about your days with peace. And your peace is of the Lord and from the Lord. Your peace is that you have a purpose. Your peace is that you are loved. Your peace is that you have a home in heaven. Your peace is that I don't know what's going to happen in this day, but I know who holds the day. And so a peace that surpasses all understanding, as he says in Philippians, but 2 Thessalonians says here in verse 16, let's 
uh, open up to that. Verse 16, it says, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16, Now may the Lord of peace, now this is something that he it possesses, that the Lord of peace, he has this peace, may, he, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times. It's not in circumstances. It's not just when you're driving A1A. It's not when you can just sit on the couch. Um, it's not just when you can find it, you know, when it's maybe away from kids or maybe when it's away from the family or maybe when it's with the family. It's not, it's not in these occasions. He's saying, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times. That just pushes away the circumstances or the place that we are because the peace isn't in the circumstances. The peace isn't in the occasions. The peace isn't this source of otherness. It is this source of God given to us. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Can you imagine coming to decisions in life? Can you imagine coming to... Um, anxieties in life, coming into your job each day, coming into uh, waking up with your family each day, uh, waking up to uh, the news each day, <laughs> waking up to the new day with, as it says here, at every time and at all times, in every way, that you can have peace. That's something we strive for. I mean, you hear it on TV of something that people would wish for. But it's not a wish. There's a certainty that there is peace with God. You have peace with God. Now, this was a separation that you had with God before Jesus came into this world and be able to die his death and rise from the tomb and connect us back again the, uh, to the grace of God. Now, we are not under God's wrath. Any. Now, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No, there is peace beyond understanding in every way at all times because it's delivered from the Lord. It's not something that we have to muster up or dream up in any kind of way. It's not something that we have to get to the road or get to the place or sit in the space. No, in every way at all times, you are at peace with the Lord because it's from the Lord and it's his actions to you, not your actions to him. But yet there's so great routines of, hey, <laughs> getting in devotion and reading the word of God and setting you right in your every day. That Jesus has given you peace before God Almighty. That he's at peace with you. He's not at war with you or wrath with you. He's for you, not against you. He's at peace with you because your sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, so are your sins as far as from the throne of God washed clean, wiped clean. So in every time, in every way, you have peace before God. And I pray that brings you an understanding and, and, and to sit in the place wherever it is, maybe not in a driver's seat, maybe not in the couch, maybe not in your house, maybe, but in every place that you sit, stand, or go, that the peace of the Lord himself gives you peace because of what he has done for you and how he views you. He's at peace with you. Hopefully you're at peace with him and yourself. He says, the Lord be with you, be with all of you. See how he ends this letter. He says, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which wasn't regular, which is distinguishing mark in, all in my letters. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The grace of God that the love of Jesus is with us gives us a peace that we can step into this day or we can step into tomorrow knowing that God's at peace with us because of Jesus. And we can be at peace with others or we can be at peace with our circumstances because we have a God who loves us. We have a God who's with us. May the peace of the Lord himself in every way, in every place, be with you all. My prayer to you, but the fact to you, God's grace and peace be with your day. What a day to take that deep breath in. 
come what may. God is in peace with me, and I'm at peace with God. What a blessed day.